Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today in this Facebook uh, live interview that we're doing, our town hall. I'm Bob Giuliano, the president of the college, and I really am pleased to have the chance to engage the community today with this town hall. You know, before turning to your questions, let me start by uh, an expression of hope that you all are doing as well as possible in these disorienting times. And I mean in this not just in direct relationship to COVID-19, but that you're also finding the time to um, celebrate those things that give you joy, to connect with people virtually and otherwise taking time for yourself um, uh, as we all react to this moment and to uh, the sense of being housebound for many of us. Um, just the other day, uh, yesterday in fact, we had our first virtual faculty meeting. Uh, which was um, really interesting to do and effective. And I started the faculty meeting with something I'd like to start today's conversation with as well. And it was a note that was sent around by a member of our admissions team who was interacting with some of our current students and incoming students, particularly first generation students from our community-based organizations. And let me just, if you'll bear with me, read you a little bit of what he wrote. Uh, so he was talking with these students and he noted that our students have glowing praise about their continued connections with professors, the support they receive uh, from help getting their belongings to Chicago, to loaner laptops and hotspots, to even assistance getting home when flights were canceled or changed. I wish um, I could have had all of you listen in on these meetings. Our students have sold the thing that makes Gettysburg College special, our community. Now that many of them are speaking with friends who attend other colleges and universities, they feel gratitude. One of them shed tears of gratitude on camera because he realized that of all the support he has been given compared to his friends has been truly the very best. And I just wanna note how vividly that seems to me to capture what it means to be part of this special community. The support we show one another, the readiness with which we express gratitude for the support that is given. Um, the fact that we are really in this together as a community. So to the faculty and staff who may be joining us, a uh, thank you again, thank you for being all in for our students. For the students and their parents, uh, thank you for your resiliency and your determination to make this new way of learning work just as well as it possibly can. For our admitted students who may be joining us, welcome. I know that you too are experiencing a sense, a sense of loss as your senior year gets disruptive. I very much hope that the admissions letter that you got from us uh, offers you uh, a sense of joy uh, and lifted your spirits. We are truly excited about having you join our community. So, since our last town hall, it's been a busy several weeks as we have gotten our remote learning up and running. Uh, we've made decisions relating to comm commencement, get acquainted day, uh, reunions and the like. And the goal of these town meetings is to give us a chance to catch up, uh, for me to reflect with you on some of these decisions, to hear what's on your mind uh, and to answer some of your questions. So please be in touch. You can be in touch either by asking questions here. I also have regular office hours every week now, uh, so please sign up for those via the president's page. So again, a lot of big decisions over the last couple of weeks, and a few of them would be the decisions that we ideally would have liked to have reached. To our students, simply put, we miss you. Uh, and I certainly regret that we're not gonna be able to have that huge celebration of all that you guys have accomplished in person in May. But you know, I was also pretty purposeful in making sure that we did not proceed with alternative plans without hearing from you. And I have to say, we have heard from you. Within the first hour, 48% of the senior class had responded with their thoughts about what alternative plans should look like. We're now up to about 78%. Um, we're still digesting your feedback. You have until the close of business on Monday. Uh, for those of you who have not yet responded, um, but let me say this, and I've tried to say this in every setting I can, um, we are going to celebrate you in style, in person, and with the special joyfulness that I think 
this semester has occasion. So I am so looking forward to seeing you all back on campus soon, to be celebrating uh, your accomplishments at some form of commencement that will really mark what you have done, and again, the specialness of this year. Now, to your questions, I am joined this afternoon by Darian Daven Davenport, the Ex Executive Director for the Office of Multicultural Engagement and Assistant Vice President for College Life. So he will share your incoming questions, take a look at them, read them to me, and we'll have that conversation. So please post your questions in the comments section. I know he already has some questions that have come since we noted this um, town hall on social media yesterday. So we'll try to tackle those as well. Uh, so with those opening words, Darian, over to you. Thank you so much, President Giuliano, and hello, Gettysburg family again. Uh, thank you for joining us. Again, just to reiterate, please submit questions um, through um, the feed. Um, thank you for joining us, those folks on Facebook Live. We really appreciate your engagement. And um, President Giuliano, just thank you for um, the inspiring words and, and really um, leading the charge to keep our community together and, and moving forward. So um, I will jump right into the questions. Um, and this one is probably one of the, the more obvious ones <laughs> that I'll, I'll give you. Um, but you know, can uh, we? Here we are. We're finishing um, the second week of our remote learning. Um, how's remote learning going? Well, one of the things that has just been strike I, I've been um, I've noted since this whole um, exercise has begun is sort of the spirit that in which we have approached this, Darian. It has been. Uh, very reflective of our community, but even more so. That is, it would be easy to take this moment as an opportunity to look backwards and say, um, and note all the things that we are missing. And obviously, we are a residential college. We believe in the importance of being together and all that that offers. But our faculty and our students have come together in a way that really I find inspiring. Are there bumps in the road? Of course there are. Actually, less so on the technological side. But as people sort of try to get their rhythm right, um, uh, I think faculty and students are all working through that. Um, but I have been really pleased with the way this has uh, played out. And you know, we've got work to do still. Um, I think it's gonna require, in a sense, a redoubling of effort on the part of the students in part, because the freshness of the experience is now two weeks in. Um, and like every semester, it takes an infusion of energy and enthusiasm to keep the class going. And the faculty will certainly bring that, but I think the students need to as well. Uh, so I think the community has done a phenomenal job. Our students are learning, and that's the most important thing. Uh, and we are continuing to find ways to get together as a faculty to reflect on what we are doing and how this experiment can be improved over, uh, as the semester proceeds. Great. Given that we, like a lot of institutions, had to make this pivot pretty quickly, um, what kind of um, feedback are you getting from either students or faculty about the change to distance learning? So I mentioned a moment ago that I have office hours, um, and I've had the opportunity to talk with parents um, and with students, uh, and of course with faculty um, in other forums as well. And the feedback is that people are really working hard to make this work effectively. Um, that, you know, the faculty has had to show some nimbleness because they had to change some of their learning objectives um, and some of the ways in which they were seeking to teach. Um, but they've done that. And again, I think they've done it with a determination to make sure that we're going to get this so that the students can really learn the material that they need to and ought to learn. And so the feedback has been one, I think, of a recognition by the students of the efforts by the faculty and an appreciation by the faculty of the efforts of the students as well. You know, and it's not just the efforts in the classroom. The other thing I just wanna underscore, and I alluded to this in my introductory comments, this is a moment to be cognizant that we are all going through a moment in time that is testing some of our emotions. Um, and, you know, we are cognizant of that for our students as well, as sure. they try to get themselves situated in this world that is changing in ways that none of us have lived through, um, and also trying to learn in ways that are different. And without the, the thing that makes this place what it is in so, so many respects, Darian, and that is the ability to be across the hall from a friend, to go into the library at night and sort of uh, kick around the topic together. 
to go to parties, to go to athletic events, to do the things that sort of also bring you the support uh, that lets you get through that, you know, problem set late at night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a little harder to do that virtually. And our faculty is cognizant of that. And I think trying to make sure that we're giving students the support that they deserve as they try to make this transition, not only academically, but given everything else that's happening in the world. So it's very much something we're paying attention to. Great, great. Are there other things? I know that you know we have some faculty and even some of our staff and administration that are doing um, specific things to try to make our, our residential experience a little bit more portable to this virtual world. Are there other things that folks have clued you in on that have been uh, great to engage our students in a different way? So one of my favorites of this, Darian, was the other day I had office hours and I had a senior biology major uh, uh, on Zoom and she was talking about a class she was having with Professor Kearney. And obviously it's hard to have a lab um, uh, virtually. Uh, but as part of his effort to make sure that the students were understanding the intricacies of some of the biology, he had students create origami embryos um, which really was creative. The student showed me what she had presented. Uh, it was artful, certainly better than I could have done. Uh, it was really quite, it was, it was both the creativity of the faculty member and the sense that the student found something in that experiment, um, intellectual experiment that is, that um, both connected to her, that challenged her in a different way. It's probably not something we would have done in the ordinary course in a classroom. Right. Um, and that difference actually isn't altogether bad because it takes us a little bit out of our ordinary rhythms. And you know, it is, it is well known that we in education believe that sometimes a form of intellectual disruption creates different forms of insight um, and different perspectives on a matter. And so I suspect that, again, it's not quite the same as being in the lab itself, but that this action by Professor Kearney caused his students to see biology in a different way than they would have had they been in the lab. And that's just one example. I could give other examples, at least in the curricular side. Um, next week on Monday, students should be looking for a communication from Dean Ramsey, uh, which is going to further summarize all of the other things that we're doing this semester, right? A college experience, Darian, isn't just about the classroom. Uh, right. It's about the co-curricular activities that are available as well. And we haven't stopped doing that. And so um, we've been doing it already, but Dean Ramsey is going to communicate uh, in a more complete and comprehensive way what the Garth White Leadership Center is doing, what's available at the Center for Career Engagement. The coaches are engaging with our athletes in a regular way. Uh, we may not be physically together, uh, but we are creating as best we can the full collegiate experience in a virtual setting. And I think our students are experiencing that, uh, at least I hope they are. Um, and uh, there's more to be done, to be sure, because we, we're standing this up pretty quickly. Um, right. And if you have thoughts, uh, students, please be in touch. Um, what can we do, whether it's in the classroom or whether it's outside the classroom, that while we're in the setting, that will enhance the experience that you're having because that's our goal. We are here fundamentally, you know this Darian, you work with students all the time. We are here for the students and we wanna make this experience the very best we can. I'd like to, to actually latch on to that because you know when you think about going to a to a virtual experience versus residential, there there are the access pieces of being able to access certain things. Um, but if I can, I'd, I'd like to talk about access in a different way. Um, you know, what has the institution done with students who may come from lower means um, to help them also succeed in this learning environment? Great question. Um, and let me start with where. Uh, the, the email that I quoted a moment ago, because in it was the beginnings of an answer to that. And that is, we have students who will not have necessarily the technology to be able to learn remotely. Um, and so one of the things that we did is we bought a whole bunch of hotspots and we have distributed them to students so they could have internet access. We have distributed learner laptops for students who needed them. Um, we have, the response of the community has been remarkable. We have a student emergency fund, as you know, because you're actively involved in helping to steward it. Um, and no surprise, the call on the emergency fund over the last several weeks has been greater than normal because this has been such a disruptive moment. 
we have met as much of the demands as we possibly can from the student emergency fund and it funds things from getting students home to other things but we also asked our community to help right. and in a very short period of time we raised more than eighty five thousand dollars to replace the uh, expenditures that we've made and to make sure that we were in a position to provide our students um, who are in need with what they need to be able to take full advantage of this. So that's part of it. It's on the technology side. It's on the sort of physical infrastructure side. We're also paying careful attention to advising. Um, and I'm sure there's more we need to do in that space. And as you know, because you're part of these conversations, the President's Council meets every morning. Uh, these days. That's not normal, folks, but we're meeting every day these <laughs> days um, uh, to talk about where we are and where we're going, how we can improve on the lessons that we've learned. And one of the topics we regularly come back to is how can we enhance the outreach to students and to check in with them to make sure they're okay at this moment in time and that they're able to learn through this setting. It was one of the topics that came up repeatedly at the faculty meeting yesterday. So Darren, this is very much on our mind. We are doing a lot of things in this space already. I'm sure there are more things that we can do and um, we're thinking about that as well. But just like I said at the outset that we asked our seniors for their thoughts about how we can recreate graduation in a way that celebrates their accomplishments, that's a reflection that we want input from the members of our community. Sure. So folks, if you're out there and you're struggling, don't struggle alone. Let us know what we can do. Um, give us your thoughts. Uh, tell us where you are struggling if you are struggling. Talk to your faculty members, talk to your advisor. I mean, I know I have student advisees. I've reached out to them a couple of times to make sure I know that they're doing okay academically and emotionally. Um, engage with your advisor. Um, this is a team effort. Um, so uh, I said this at our first town hall, I'll say it again, this is not a time to be passive. The strength of this community is the relationship between uh, the students and the faculty, the students and the rest of the uh, uh, administration and staff of this place. So students, if you're having a problem, let us know about it. Let's see what we can do. Right, great. Thank you so much, President Juliano. Um, and kind of staying in the, in the same vein as far as the, the student focus or student center piece, um, we understand that there, there are students that have circumstances where they couldn't um, go home, um, potentially. Can you talk to us a little bit about how many students are actually still on campus and what is the college doing to help support them? Uh, great question. And of course, there were students that couldn't make it home. And of course, we are a community that takes care of one another. And so we thought it was essential, wasn't really a choice, that we were gonna make sure that uh, we provided these students with a place to be. Uh, and so we have now under 50, slightly under 50 students who either because of travel restrictions or other uh, acute personal circumstances weren't able safely or plausibly to return to home or to another location. And so those students have the full range of support services that we provide to our students. We're checking in with them regularly. They have access to our health services program. We are, of course, making sure that they are fed. Uh, they also have access to the technological help that we're providing to all of our students with the online learning. You know, we're checking in with them uh, to make sure they're doing well. A lot of these students are international. And so Brad Lancaster, whom you know, Darian, is uh, working both with the students and uh, as intermediaries with families back, um, uh, back home. Because no surprise, if my son or daughter were half a world away at this moment in time, I'd be concerned. And so part of what Brad is making sure we're doing is uh, connecting with parents and making sure that kids are connecting with parents uh, at the same time. So we are certainly paying attention to those students on campus. Uh, we're trying to keep them safe uh, and also trying to make sure that they make the same educational progress that we want for all of our students. Great, great. Well, um, President Juliano, I'd like to jump into some of the uh, student questions that we, we've been receiving. And the first one comes from um, Anna Audia, who's class of 2023. Um, Anna asked a question that a lot of folks have, have asked um, over the last couple of weeks. Are we getting refunded for half of this semester's room and board credit? 
So Anna, um, first, I hope you're doing well. Um, secondly, yes, um, we have, one of the things I'd urge all people who are listening, if you have questions about what we're doing, is to go to uh, our homepage. You'll see a link there to pages that are dealing with our response to the pandemic. And on that page, uh, you will find a set of FAQs, fre frequently asked questions, and the answers that we are providing, just as an efficient means of getting information out there. And we were clear from the outset uh, that we were going to give a credit to all of our students for the room and board uh, remaining for the rest of the semester, which is half of the uh, half of the room and board charge for the second semester. Um, I won't get into the mechanics of it, but you should find, um, if it's not already there, I just don't know, but a credit on your term bill um, for the uh, half semester's room and board. Great, thank you so much. Um, one of the um, big areas of discussion um, also has to deal with commencement. Uh, and as you know, a lot of students have asked, a lot of um, soon-to-be graduates have asked about um, commencement and, and what things look like. And the first question I have comes from Becca Maroney, who's, of course, class of 2020, um, who asked, how long do seniors have to fill out the survey that asked about um, potential options for commencement? And when will a decision be made about commencement? Hi, Becca. Thank you for your question. And again, hope uh, remote learning is going well. And I, I need to say, of course, what I say whenever I talk to a senior, and that is just I'm terribly sorry for the disruption that has happened. We've talked to so many different students who, of course, want to be here um, and miss the sense of community that this place offers, and also wants to make sure that there is closure to what has been for, I think, all of our students, just a remarkable four years, the sense of connection they have to this place, the recognition that they and their families have of the intellectual and personal growth that has happened over the course of the four years that they've been here. Um, so first, I'm sorry that we can't all get together on May 17th in the way that was planned. Um, you do know, as I tried to emphasize in my communication, that we are going to celebrate you all. We're going to celebrate you all in a style that is befitting of all that you have done, and I hope even a little more so because of the disruption that has occurred this year. None of this answers your question, of course, so let me do that. And that is the survey closes at the, uh, on Monday. And so as I said in my opening comments, we've heard from about 78% of your class already. Uh, so we've got a remarkable response. Getting a 78% response to any survey is uh, remarkable. So um, please, but we want to hear from all of you. Um, and I will hope that we will come to a decision as soon thereafter as we can. It's going to take a time, take some time to digest the full um, uh, range of the responses that we've received. We are engaging uh, members of the class officers to help us um, think about what we're trying to do that will make sense. So it won't be on Tuesday, but we're hoping to come to a decision um, sooner rather than later um, for a whole bunch of reasons including to let you all plan and to help us plan right and and i'm thinking because we've had questions that have also come up about things such as like spring honors day um you know will those things happen uh we have you know one of the great traditions uh stoles of gratitude i'm sure you know again uh same kind of thing we're, we're working through that uh that plan let me just say two things about that and particularly if there are admitted students here um there is so there are so many wonderful traditions that this place has um, Darren has mentioned one, which is the Stoles of Gratitude, and it goes back to something I said actually uh, when I was reflecting on the email that I read, that this is a place that readily expresses gratitude for um, uh, what they get here and how people support them. In fact, I've heard this from just about every student I've had uh, a Zoom session with in my office hours. But we do it in a very formal way. Um, maybe that sounds wrong, but we do it in a way that is very much us. Um, and that is seniors are given a stole. And they um, bestow that on a member of the community who has really meant something special to them, who has helped them find their footing here or find more about who they are. It may be a faculty member. Darren, I have to imagine you've received more than your fair share of these stoles over the time you've been on this campus. Um, uh, so it may be an administrator, maybe someone in 
the dining hall who, you know, our dining um, hall workers know all of our students. They go out of their way to make connections and help students, particularly first years, feel at home here. And so the Stoles of Gratitude are a wonderful tradition um, that, we, that we want to celebrate as well. In any case, the survey has a variety of the things that normally accompany graduation listed with a request that students rank the ones that they would most prefer to see continue, just on the chance that we may not be able to do all of them. Uh, so as you complete the survey, uh, go through all of it and make sure that you're identifying your thoughts about the things that are most essential for an in-person graduation, if that's where we head um, sometime down the road. Great, thank you so much. Um, I have another question um, from our seniors, but a little bit of a different approach. Um, and it really has to deal with the world potentially that they're into entering into after their degrees are conferred. Um, you know, question is, I'm, I'm a graduating senior and I'm really worried about getting a job in this economy. Um, can we continue to engage the, uh, the Center for Career Engagement? So you've learned already that I sometimes give long and discursive answers. Let me do this one shorter. Yes. Now let's say how. Um, we have something called Connect Gettysburg. If you haven't signed up for it, you should. One of the things that it does is it gives you the opportunity to find alumni who are doing things or have interests that may align with yours. And that form of mentorship and connection matters. Again, to admitted students, this is not just a community why you're here. It is a community when you graduate as well. I'm going to digress a little bit now. Since I gave my short, pithy answer, Jerry, and I can digress a little bit. But wear a Gettysburg t-shirt or a sweatshirt outside of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and you're going to have people come up to you and talk to you. Um, why? Because it's who we are. Um, you see that in Gettysburg Connect. This is a means in which our alumni want to support our current students, um, paying it forward, as the saying goes. So. Go to Gettysburg Connect. Um, there's something called Handshake in the Center for Career Engagement that will let you set up an appointment to talk with somebody uh, about how you're thinking about your career and to get their advice. Um, the Center for Career Engagement also has virtual drop-in, a virtual drop-in waiting room. Um, I'm not going to put the, go to their website, you'll see the times in which you can do it. So the short answer is yes, and the Center for Career Engagement is looking to help uh, because yes, it is a hard time given what's happening out there. Let us see what we can do. Darren, that was a question from our seniors, but let me also say to our alums, and particularly to our recent alums, who are also gonna be potentially dislocated by the world and the changes that have happened. The Center for Career Engagement is also there for you as well. So if there are, if there are alumni, and again, particularly recent alumni, who are out there um, trying to figure out how to make sense of all of this, please be in touch and let's see what we can do to help. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to um, really kind of discuss, you know, we, we were in, on spring break, we had extended spring break, and then we went to a virtual environment. And I know some of the folks, whether they're seniors or, or first year students, um, really had things that they left on campus. So one of the questions that we, we got from students was when can we return to campus to gather the rest of our belongings? And if there's an on-campus commencement, um, can we do it during commencement or a commencement ceremony? Or will there be another time for me to collect my things? So really, not just a question for seniors, but I guess for any student who left belongings on campus, you know, when can they go get their things? Darren, great question. Um, one of the realities that we have all dealt with, you're all dealing with it in your lives as well, but as we think about institutional decisions, are two things I'd note. One is a number of things we just don't know because all of this is evolving in such um, rapid time. But secondly, a number of things that are not in our control. Um, the answer to this question falls into the second category. Um, right now, the governor of Pennsylvania has basically closed all but life essential businesses. So we are not I'm not in the president's office right now. I am in the house. Um, and Darren, you are not on campus either. You are sitting at home because by virtue of the order of the governor, which has been extended indefinitely, we're not permitted back onto campus at this point. Um, and so 
we can't do anything until that order is lifted and we don't know when that order is going to be lifted beyond that college life does have a group of people who are convening to think about how most effectively to answer that question once the um, stay in ho stay at home order is lifted in the commonwealth of pennsylvania so stay tuned we will update we will update our stu our students uh, seniors included about how um, how we're thinking about that um, but it's going to take a little bit i think for us to work that through great thank you so much um, I want to transition a little bit to, um, you know, potentially, you know, folks are already thinking about the fall semester, right, and, and what's coming in with the virus and so much uncertainty, it becomes challenging to be able to, to really figure that out. Um, but we received multiple questions from um, students, even including a, a graduating senior, and I'll just, and Marissa Belanda actually um, asked the question really well, so I will, I'll shape it there and we can throw the discussion out. Um, how is Gettysburg preparing for the potential that classes may not resume in August on a face-to-face -face basis? So, uh, Marissa, thank you, and thank you for your recent email to me as well, and I know you've been, uh, we've had folks be in touch with you. Um, so I start with our emphatic hope that, of course, we are back together in August. Um, um, it, you know this, Marissa, um, the existing Gettysburg College students know this. To the students we've admitted for the class of 2024, you will know it w when you join us, uh, as I hope you will. Um, you just step foot on this campus and you understand why you want to be here. Um, I'm relatively new to the place. Uh, this is my first year as president. And the sense of place is, is really something different than I have experienced anywhere else. So we want to be back together in the fall. Um, and we are planning to be back together in the fall. But go back to my, the answer to my prior questions. There are the unknowns and the things we don't control. This may fall into a little bit of both. Uh, we don't know the evolution of the virus and we don't control the actions that the government is going to take. Um, obviously, we are anticipating what we think is not the likelihood. We hope it is a remote chance that the virus may still be um, in play in such a way that may make it harder for us to reconvene as we would otherwise want to. And we're thinking about how best to respond to that should that what we hope to be remote possibility arise. Um, so yes, we are thinking about it, Marissa. That's different than saying we have answered it yet, but it is something that is on our mind as something we want to plan for uh, should that possibility arise. And like all good plans, Sometimes you plan for things, and oftentimes you plan for things precisely because you hope they will not occur, and we hope this will not occur. Great, thank you. We actually have, have a question come in just, that just came in from a student, um, really uh, on a shorter window, however, and this one comes from um, Lori Hopkirk, who asked about the summer. Um, you know, what about summer Kobe fellows? Um, we're hoping that, that we can move forward during the the research the remote research so um what about summertime have any plans or discussions been made about summer programming so um thank you for that question if one of the things that i have i think been tried to, i've been clear about in uh, my communications and that is i've tried to take this a step at a time we've tried very hard not to um, jump into judgments prematurely uh, just given the possibility that the facts and circumstances may change because again, whether it is extending spring break, though I think students didn't really object to that in the first instance, mm -hmm. um, or uh, deciding that we were gonna go remote, um, or commencement, each one of these um, we recognize can create disappointment for students um, and a disruption to what we're trying to do. So we really are taking seriously the value of pacing this and coming to decisions no sooner than we need to. I'm gonna put the summer in this camp because again, for our admitted students, our summer programs are simply remarkable. The opportunity to work intimately with faculty uh, in a variety of settings, uh, to generate research that may be publishable in peer reviewed journals, um, getting your hands in the middle of something. These programs are, they, they, are, they are remarkable. Um, I'm repeating myself almost speechless, and that's hard for me to happen to me. Um, so we don't want to cancel these if we can avoid it. Uh, and so I know that you all are trying to make plans, and that's we're cognizant of that. Um, but we're seeing if we can pace this a little bit. Um, 
to, because I don't think we yet fully understand what the virus may look like in the summer. And so that's an issue that we're debating. So stay tuned. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, we also have um, folks who are new Gettysburgians uh, that'll be looking to transition to the college in the fall. Um, and one of the questions that uh, was asked was from an admitted student who says, as an admitted student, um, will the college's financial situation impact my scholarship or my aid package? And I guess this would be for a new student or a current student. Well, first to our admitted student, bravo, congratulations. Uh, there's a way to clap virtually in Zoom, but that may be beyond my technological ability. We're thrilled that you were admitted. Again, as I said at the outset, I hope your, uh, the orange envelope that you got buoyed your spirit uh, and uh, you're excited about joining us in the fall. Um, we have not adjusted our financial aid budget. Uh, we're gonna do what we always do, which is we're gonna work with uh, students and their families individually. So no, we're not reducing our financial aid commitment at this moment in time, because again, we recognize that the world has thrown a curveball not just to colleges, but to families as well. And we want you here, and we're gonna work with you as we can. Uh, so um, be in touch. Great. And again, congratulations. Great. Um, also another question from an admitted student um, that asked, I've been admitted to Gettysburg College, but I do not wanna make my decision until I've physically been on campus. How do I get permission to walk around the campus and determine if this is the right place for me? Oh boy, uh, what a wonderful question. Um, yeah. I wish I could say just come on campus, but going back to something I said earlier, we're closed and it's too bad because I've not experienced our Get Acquainted Day, but I have heard a lot about our Get Acquainted Day. And I know this from all that I have heard that when students come to our Get Acquainted Day, they overwhelmingly become Gettysburg College students. So I wish you could come to our physical Get Acquainted Day. I wish you could get the sense of this place while our students and faculty are here and engaging. I wish you had the in-person chance to have the conversation with our students because there are no better people to learn what this college is about than talking to one of our students. Um, you know, I'm gonna digress again. One of the questions I regularly ask students is this, and that is, what would you change? That is, you're particularly seniors, what would you change, or recent alums? And they look at me with this sort of quizzical expression oftentimes, Darian, that says, I'm not sure I would change anything. Um, that's a pretty powerful statement. Now, so we can't have a physical get acquainted day because of the order of the governor that basically closes us down. But we are doing really interesting things virtually. So we will have a virtual Get Acquainted Day, which I would urge you to sign up for and attend. But we're also doing stuff. One of the advantages in a strange way of this is that we're not just gonna have a single day of programming. We're gonna have an extended series of programming that's gonna give you the ability to understand what Gettysburg College is about. The other day, the um, person responsible for admissions was in touch with me and she commented about a student panel that was um, being put on that 90 uh, admitted students had, show, had signed up for and 120, I believe it was, actually appeared at. And by all accounts, it was such a wonderful program. Students were talking about their experiences here and gave the admitted students a real sense of what this place is. So participate in the virtual events. Reach out to people on campus. Um, yeah, you may not be able to physically come here. By the way, we now have a virtual tour of the campus as well. So experience that, it's a beautiful campus. Um, uh, so I wish I could say, I want you here as much as you wanna be here um, because then I know you would come. Um, do the virtual stuff. I think you're gonna see the specialness that marks this place. Yeah, and I, I, I definitely echo that. I've, I've had the chance to be involved uh, with enrollment and doing some of the virtual uh, pieces, and, it, and it's been great to be able to connect with, to students in a different way. Um, right. than we, when we, but we're still build, building a connection, which is which is great. So, um, how about you know? There's this always this um, discussion of a decision date, right? And a lot of students are you know they're admitted um, not only by us but other institutions. Um, hopefully it's not so much in if Gettysburg, but when Gettysburg, right? When they come. Um, but you know, there's this May 1st uh, deadline 
everyone talks about. Will the college extend that deadline or hold fast to it? And um, if, if they do um, not change it, why? Um, the college is looking at this, of course, as you would expect it would, just given the disruption of the world. But at the moment, we're holding to the May 1st uh, deadline as a means of just creating some order and discipline to a process that you would imagine um, has many moving parts to it. Um, but again, the college is paying attention to what's happening elsewhere and is recognizing that you know, our students are struggling with a set of, our high school students, our admitted students are struggling with a set of issues as well. So um, cognizant of the issue at the moment, we're, at, we're still at May 1st. Great. Great. Uh, we've had another question come in uh, from Stacy Boyer, and Stacy actually has two questions. The first is, how will freshmen who have never done housing before sign up for housing when the time comes? Stacy, you now have learned that I am a first first year president, and I have absolutely no idea how to answer that question. Let me, Darren, you may know the answer to that. Stacy, we have a wonderful uh, Residence Life and First Year Experience office that is going to work with students. Um, you will be getting information from them as far as how to sign up for housing, and then we'll work through the process with you. So please stay tuned. Uh, we'll definitely be in touch. What you've just learned is that Darren actually knows all the answers. <laughs> and it's so far from the truth. <laughs> there's, well, there's a second question that Stacy asked that I, will, um, that I don't know the answer to, of course, um, but Stacy asked, um, when was when must the decision between a letter grade versus a satisfactory unsatisfactory be made? Um, refer to the policy. I, if I'm remembering right, and this is from memory, uh, seven days after you receive the grade, if I'm remembering, but I may not be exactly right, uh, the policy was distributed. It's explicitly in the policy. So please take a look at that. So let me back up for the people who don't know what we're talking about and put some context into this. Um, as I said at the very outset, this is a moment of disorientation for our students. Uh, it's disorienting because of the things that are happening outside in the world. Uh, it's disorienting because their um, traditional educational experience has been disrupted, and we recognize that. And students have expressed concern that somehow this may um, impede their ability to do their best academic work. And they were anxious about the possibility that they would somehow then suffer GPA, their ability to get into graduate school uh, to pursue other academic interests with, by virtue of both the novelty of this learning format uh, and the associated anxieties, both about the transition and the state of the world. And so one of the things that our faculty did is to um, waive our normal rules. You normally can't take a whole bunch of classes pass fail, we actually call it satisfactory, unsatisfactory here. Um, and we permitted students the chance for a choice uh, after they get their grade, either to keep the grade or to convert it to a sat and unsat. And one of the reasons we gave students the choice is because for a lot of students, it was important to get a grade. Uh, if they were heading off to medical school uh, or they were doing other things in which the manifestation of subject matter expertise as reflected in the grade mattered. And we didn't want in any respect to make it more difficult for our students. And so we thought giving them the choice after that they received their grade was both an acknowledgement that this is a period of anxiety and stress for them and hopefully reduce some of that stress and let them tackle the material in a more, um, uh, more direct way um, without that uh, extra anxiety. And um, so that was, part, that was part of the goal. Someone was just texting something that answered this question. Let's see if I can pull this up. Students will have, thank you, um, until Monday, May, from Monday, May 11th until Friday, May 15th at 5 uh, p.m. to decide about moving a course to SAT on SAT. Great, great, thank you, thank you for that. Um, we've received a, a couple of questions that, that have come in. Again, this was, um, I know you already discussed it as far as you know, campus being closed, students being able to retrieve items. One was from Elisa Villarreal, and another one was from CVB, um, both asking about when they could get their belongings, but you already really discussed that. But the one part um, that CVB actually asked um, with that was, are the buildings secured? Oh, yes. All Every campus building, um, but for the buildings that the students are living in, um, and the dining hall, wherever they're wherever they're eating, 
are locked, secured. DPS, uh, Department of Public Safety, continues to monitor the campus. So yes, even the library at this point is, uh, as I understand it, shut down. You could not gain access to it. Right, great, thank you. Um, we have actually some questions from our alum, uh, alumni population, um, and th this is really in reference to reunion weekend, as we know is, is coming up uh, pretty shortly. And the first one is reunion weekend is scheduled for the last days of May. Do you think it is a little premature to make this decision to, to postpone now? Um, thank for well, first of all, thank you for um, joining us today. Thank you for being interested in joining the reunion. Thank you for the commitment to the college that is reflected in all of that. It's one of those decisions that we talked a lot about, and no surprise that particularly for people out there in the working world, there's a time that they need to plan. And the judgment we made, and we also need to plan to really have the reunion work as it needs to work. Uh, and we made the judgment that um, it just wasn't responsible to keep people on the hook um, for an extended period of time. You know, I said in my note to the community about commencement, and it's not much different, I think, when it comes to reunion, it's only a few days afterwards, that we might have felt differently if there were signs in the evolution of the pandemic that things were beginning to abate in substantial ways, um, at least in Pennsylvania. Um, that's not the case. I mean, just yesterday, I think it is, this county got placed under um, a stay-at-home order. Um, yeah. So we're, ha we're still seeing the number of cases rise. Um, so I'm not sitting here with optimism that by mid-May, things would have changed in such a dramatic way that we would feel that it is appropriate to bring back so many people from all over the country uh, to one place and interact throughout this. Uh, whether it was the decision to extend spring break, to remove, to go to remote learning, uh, to go to a remote workforce, which we've effectively done, our first and most important priority has been people's safety and well-being. You know, we will figure out the best way to teach, the best way to learn. What we're not going to do is compromise people's health and well-being. Great, thank you. Um, we have a, another question uh, that came in which is actually, it's a, it's a really good question, given the current state of affairs and a lot of things that you um, discussed in the earlier message as far as our community. And this one's from um, Alana Hefner. And Alana asks, what makes Gettysburg the best place for students? Oh boy, Alana, first of all, congratulations again. Um, I said a moment ago that I'm new to this place. And so I see it, I think, with the fresh set of eyes that an admitted student would see it uh, as well. And I came here having spent 25 years at my old institution, and I really loved the job that I had there. It was my alma mater, and I was incredibly happy to be there. But this place called to me in a special way because of what it is and its engagement with students. Um, I said earlier in response to a question about Get Acquainted Day, that if you come onto this campus, if you interact with our students, if you interact with our faculty, you will sense something that's different. Um, and it is the sense of togetherness, that we recognize that we are better when we do something collectively, um, that we support one another. Uh, the spirit of this place is, is palpable, it's powerful, it's uplifting, it's inspiring. I've seen it in the response of the community to this event and the way we have rallied together. And again, not look backwards, but look forward and said, how are we gonna do this to the best of our ability? So you're gonna engage with faculty who are all in for you, right? They care about you and about your success. They care about you not just as a student, but as a person. The number of letters I have received in my time as president from parents and students who talked about whether faculty or staff going above and beyond to help a student in the classroom and in their personal lives would surprise you. It happens so regularly that I no longer call it an extraordinary act on the part of the college. It is actually quite ordinary for us. It's who we are. So you're gonna find classmates that, that engage you intellectually and socially. You're gonna find a curriculum that is rich and broad. We are larger than most liberal arts colleges. That has consequences for the breadth of our offerings. You're gonna find co-curricular activities like our Eisenhower Institute. You know, we're 80 miles outside of Washington, DC. We have a campus that helped define American history. And that's not a backward looking thing. 
That is a statement of who we are, where we're going as an institution, what we want from our students. We're graduating students who go out and make a difference in the world because this place is oriented towards making sure they're prepared to make a difference. They know who they are. They know, um, they, they hone their abilities. Um, so I think you come because it's a special place. And you know, I'll go back to what I said. When I ask students, what would you change? They look at me quizzically. I think you'd find that if you came here. It is a remarkable place that does remarkable things for our students. And so I hope to see you in the fall at Freshman Convocation uh, to greet you to this place, to have you walk through. One of our great traditions is people walk one way through Pennsylvania Hall when they um, matriculate as a student. And what you hear from our seniors, one of the reasons they wanna come back onto campus is the other part of that tradition is when they graduate, Pennsylvania Hall, by the way, is, our, is the building I work in. It is the building that served as a hospital during the Civil War and the Battle of Gettysburg took place around our campus. So the first years walk through one way and the seniors walk through another way. Um, it is a statement of personal growth. It is a statement of looking forward and looking outwards of the campus, that you are ready to be launched into the world that awaits. That's what this place is. It's a pretty remarkable place. So I really hope to see you in August in South Central Pennsylvania, uh, looking at me while I offer you words of wisdom, I hope, that will launch your academic career for the next four years. That's well said. I don't, I don't think I could really add anything to that. You know, the, the people, uh, the community, uh, you know, being on the student side of the house, uh, having a chance to work with students directly has, um, it's a blessing. Um, I'll have to say, um, and the blessing to be able to do it um, at Gettysburg College. So, you know, it's just the people, you know, they, they, they make the difference. And there are a lot of colleges and universities that have stuff. Um, but our people are, they're the nucleus of, of what we make this, uh, this do and, and make this thing go. So, yeah, well said, President Juliano. Thank you so much. Um, I want to be Darian, but one of the things that makes us special is people like Darian. And I mean that sincerely. The opportunity to interact with him over the course of your time here, you will know him. You will come to know him. Uh, and he will influence the way in which you uh, handle your four years on this, in this special place. Thank you. That's too, too kind. Thank you so much. Um, we like to you know, say thank you to everyone who uh, participated today through Facebook Live. We really appreciate you um, showing up for us and connecting with us uh, again for another town hall. We'd like to thank the folks who submitted questions. Um, hopefully we're able to, to get um, those answers to you. Again, please don't hesitate, as President Juliano said, to reach out to us. We are more than happy um, to talk to you about Gettysburg College overall or answer whatever question you may have. Um, but, you know, before we end, President Juliano, I'll kick it back to you for some, um, some closing remarks. You know, uh, first of all, again, let me echo Darian's thanks to all of you for joining us today. Um, these are challenging times, but challenging times also, I think, speak to the nature of communities. Um, and I've said this a couple of times during the course of our conversation today. Um, but if you want the measure of a place, look at how we are responding to this. And I think you will see that this is a, a statement of who we are. This is a statement of our togetherness. This is a statement of our commitment to our students and their well being. It's a recognition that not everything is going exactly as we would like it to. Um, that's the nature of the, uh, the world that we inhabit right now. But a determination to learn, to grow uh, ourselves, just as we want our students to learn and to grow, and a real belief fundamentally, again, that we are in this together and that together we're gonna figure out. How, make, how to make this the richest, most engaging experience that we possibly can for our students. So uh, thank you all for joining us today. I've enjoyed the chance to catch up. Again, remi reminder that we have office, I have office hours. Um, email us, we wanna hear from you. Um, the challenge of distance is that we can't see each other in the same way. You know, I normally, Darren, as you know, walk across campus and walking across campus, we all run into a whole bunch of students and we hear what's happening. Uh, the virtual environment makes that harder. Please be in touch with us. We want to hear from you and we want to know you're okay. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Darren, thank you.